Hello everyone, welcome back to the How to FPV series where I teach you how to fly a first person view drone in short, easy to digest episodes. So in this episode, we are going to learn how to hit gaps and hitting a gap is just flying through a tight space or a tight obstacle. And this is important for your progression as a pilot because flying through a tight space forces you to have precise control of the drone. Whereas in the previous episode, we were just flying around in a big open field. You don't have to be very precise. So learning to fly precisely is going to pave the way for us to do some aerobatics, which we're going to learn starting in the next episode. So without further ado, let's learn how to hit some gaps. All right, first thing to note is that I'm going to be using this gap and this fence, which is pretty tight and it's metal which I wouldn't recommend if you're a beginner. So ideally probably just a couple of bushes since they're soft, or you could even put a couple, to couple cones down. But this is just convenient for me, so we're gonna use that gap for demonstration purposes. Now before we talk about hitting the gap, we need to talk about how to bail from hitting the gap in case our lineup isn't good enough. And the principle I wanna talk about here is your throttle position in relation to the quad's acceleration. So the more throttle you give, the more the quad is going to accelerate. So if, for example, you want to turn really fast, you want to use a lot of throttle and bank really hard, like so. I can turn really fast and accelerate very quickly around a corner like that. Same thing if we want to bail from a gap. We're going to just pitch back and give a lot of throttle and then pitch back forward to see where we're going again. But you can see a lot of banking and a lot of throttle allows us to just get away from the gap as fast as possible and accelerate quickly so we don't hit whatever we're not lined up for. And this whole adding throttle principle to turn or to maneuver the quad is gonna be important later in future episodes. But now let's talk about hitting the gap. So let's just talk about how we're gonna line it up. You wanna keep the gap in the center of your camera view with your yaw. So right now the gap is to the left. I want to use the yaw, get it right in the center. And then we also want to use our roll to position ourselves left and right in the gap. So it's a bit of a combination of the yaw and roll, just like with turning to get yourself lined up but the main thing is you want to keep that gap centered in your view because your mind is naturally going to guide you towards whatever you are focused on. You just focus on the gap and you're going to use the throttle and pitch to control your speed as per usual through the gap. So yes, you want to go relatively slowly because that gives you more time to line it up, but you don't want to go too slow because if you're basically at a standstill, you can actually drift left or right into whatever you're flying through. Whereas if you're carrying some speed, um, if your lineup is good, you're basically going to hit the gap no matter what. Um, and you, you really won't have the opportunity to fly sideways into your obstacles. You'll either hit them dead on or make the gap. So using the yaw to point, use the roll to move the quad left and right, and then just fly through the gap. And I know I'm making it look easy, but this is gonna take practice, of course. So don't be intimidated. Just practice, practice, and you will get the hang of it. So you can see I pitched back here, banked left some to adjust my lineup because I was flying too fast and too far to the right. So once again, just to reiterate, point with the yaw, and then see I'm too far to the right, so I'm gonna bank left and then bank right again to level myself out and then fly through. And you can see I actually slowed myself down by pitching back because I wasn't lined up. And of course, if you have it lined up very poorly like this, just pitch back, give it throttle, and then pitch back forward so you can see where you're going again. Let's try again. And you can see right there, like I made very few adjustments. 
um, and I made very small adjustments. So this is kind of like hovering where you want to make a very small adjustment and then wait a split second to read what the quad is doing before you make another adjustment. So you don't want to over control the quad just like with hovering. You want to kind of make a, make a movement, assess, and then make a movement again, assess, make a movement. So right there I gave a little bit of left and then a little bit of right just assessing. So I need left, more left, and then right. And you see there I had to actually bank through the gap so that I wouldn't run into the left fence. And sometimes it can be easier to actually do a turn through the gap. So let's say I do a right turn because you're already banking. And if you're good at turning, it may feel a little more natural because when you are completely level, you actually have to bank a fair amount before your quad starts turning. There's kind of a dead zone um, in a very in the low angles around basically zero banking left and right. Whereas if you're turning, um, you can actually use your throttle a little bit to accelerate like left and right, and your roll will actually be a little bit more sensitive, which in the case of hitting gaps can help you. So you can try both, and it's, it's actually just good practice to try turning left and right through the gap once you get better. So that's pretty much it. If you get in a pickle, pitch back, give a lot of throttle, pitch back forward. As far as lining it up, maintain some speed, not too fast, but also not too slow. Use your yaw to point yourself, and then your roll to line it up, left and right, and your throttle and pitch to control your speed. All right, that is it for this episode of How to FPV. In the next episode, we are going to start learning some aerobatics, which is very exciting. We're gonna learn flips and rolls in the next episode. So if you enjoyed this video or you learned something from it, make sure to give the video a like. And if you got value from the video or you're using an ad blocker, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Links to the Patreon, Discord, and Instagram are down in the description below. Thanks for watching.